The City on the Edge of Forever, Star Trek Season 1, maybe the most famous episode or one of the most famous episodes with Joan Collins, who I have her autograph from Batman 66. She played the siren. She's awesome. Um, we're going to review this using my space method, story, pacing, artistry, characters, enjoyment. Each category gets a score between 0 and 2. 2 is the best you can get in any category. Um, I'm going to give the storyline a 1.5 out of 2. Uh, great uh, story. It's a little bit simple it, it, when we've seen so many time travel things. Um, the crew finds, they get land, so check, land on a planet, awesome, alien, but then they don't spend much time there. This You got this tunnel. McCoy goes insane because he's injected himself with some stuff, whatever it is. And um, he's mad. Oh, they're after me. Uh. He jumps through this time portal, goes back in time, and Fs up everything. The whole entire timeline's Fed up. There's no Enterprise. Nobody exists. It's all, it's all gone. Um, Kirk and Spock have to go back and stop what he's done. So uh, it, it's, a, it's your basic time travel. Stop the guy from doing the thing. Or... or, or, or um, well, yeah, stop the guy from doing the thing, the whatever he did. So it's 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 basic. I'm still giving it 1.5 because you know I, I kind of I don't know. There's something about this episode. It feels very special. Uh, I just kind of like it. I think we're gonna get to the relationship stuff with with, with the character section, but um, yeah, there's just something neat about it. And, and they're there for a while in in the in the in the past, and they've got to get money. And they've got to figure out, like, okay, we don't know when McCoy's going to get here. So Spock is trying to construct some kind of, you know, device from the primitive stuff, you know, primitive things that they have. It, it's all the generic kind of time travel -y stuff, but it's done in a really nice way. And there's a lot of heart put into it. So, yeah, good job. Pacing, I'm actually going to give the pacing a two out of two. Uh, normally, I would be like, well, they're just kind of, you know, meandering around. But... I found the, I found like it, it was progressing. Like, it's like, okay, they get there. Okay, you know, get closed, boom. And then something happens with that. Okay, we need to find a place to stay, boom, get that. Mm, you know, then, okay, gotta get closed, boom, get that. And then it's like, oh, this girl's here. So it's like, well, let's let, let's find out more about this time period. And then she's helping them uh, getting, uh, getting so, like, you know, getting jobs and stuff. And then Spock's getting the equipment. And it's like, oh, he's about to create, oh, it, it doesn't work. Oh, he's gotta get another part, you know. so. I, I didn't find, I thought it was pretty cool. Like, I didn't think it was boring or anything. So I, I, I thought it was actually, the pacing was really good. The artist show, I'll give it a 1.5. It looks cool. You know, you got the past in there. Um, I like the costumes. Um, it just, it just like, it, it, this is one of these ones where it, like, it feels like they've really like gone back. And even the, like the stuff in that asteroid with that, with that uh, space uh, alien guy, you know, he's just like that tunnel thing. That was wicked. Uh, I am watching the upgraded versions. I wanted to point out, so I'm watching the 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 I don't want to say George Lucas <laughs> versions because he just adds like a bunch of garbage in the background too. Um, I'm I'm watching the Blu-rays that have been um, up upscaled and added with CGI graphics. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, but it, it looks good to me. So it looks cool on that planet. Um, the characters. Well, we got to give that a perfect score of two out of two. I mean, this is a lot of great character stuff. And I know people always say, oh, Kirk kisses the girls and all this kind of crap. Um, it really doesn't happen as often as you might think if you're not a Star Trek fan and you keep hearing about this kind of a thing. It's like, not, not really. This was maybe the only time, certainly in season one. I, this is my fourth or fifth time going through all these. Certainly season one. This is the first one where you're like, he really did care about her. Like he says, oh, I think I'm in love with Edith Keeler. And I remember her name. And, and if you've been watching my videos, you notice I don't really say the names of the aliens and stuff too much or the characters because I usually don't remember them. Um, I'm not like a super hardcore Trek guy. Like I don't, I, you know, I don't, you know, I've got a lot of toys, uh, but I don't have, I don't remember every detail of, you know, what they said and, you know, what warp, I don't know what warp they can go to, so maybe eight, I don't know if they can do warp eight, like, I don't know the, the, the details of it, I'm just watching it as uh, a sci-fi fan, it is my second favorite TV show of all time, but even my first favorite show, Doctor Who, I don't remember every little detail of episodes and stuff, um, that's just not how I work, I just work with getting into the thing that I'm watching, which makes me a little bit of an easier reviewer, because I'm watching it to be entertained by a cool story and characters that I love, that's where we're at. But I really felt like, uh, and I remember Edith Keeler because, and I remembered her name from whatever, when I first saw it. 
Um, she was just such a wit, like wicked, like she's helping people out and stuff. It's awesome. Um, so she's a great character. I totally bought their relationship as well. I thought it was great. And I really thought it was sad that he has to let her die. It is sad. It's not, it's not fake sad just to have a fake sad thing at the end. Like you're like, yeah, this sucks. So, uh, really, really good. I mean, the enjoyment factor has to be a two out of two. Uh, I love this episode. I think it's awesome. I want to give it a 10 out of 10. I'm giving it a nine out of 10. I want to give it a 10 out of 10, but I do have to admit that, look, it's just go back in time, stop the guy. That's it. That's, that's sort of the only idea that we have here. Right. Um, but it was done so well. And it's such a, it's such a like great, like emotional story too, that I, I, like, I mean, I'm, I'm giving it a nine out of 10. I cannot give it any lower than that. I, I want to give it a 10 out of 10. If you ask me in my private life, you know, I'm doing these videos to, 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 to present my review method um, in order to try to be as objective as I possibly can, knowing that I love Star Trek. <laughs> um, I'm a human being. I can't, you know, I can't be, I love Spock, but I'm not Spock. Um, I'm more like Avon from Blake 7. <laughs> uh, no, but I love, uh, I love Spock, but I can't be this logical. I, I, I've got to give in to the emotions. So if you ask me outside of YouTube and just say, hey, Jay, what did you, what did you think? Of I was like, oh, dude, this is like 10 out of 10. You, you got to watch this one. So um, if I'm scrutinizing the crap out of it, I'll give it a nine. You could just say it's a 10, whatever. I'll leave it up to you. Everyone loves this episode. So let me know in the comments how much you love it. Uh, and if you like my system, please like the video and subscribe. I'm going to do all the Star all the original Star Treks for sure. I don't know if I'll do every Star Trek thing. Maybe I'll see how I feel because uh, I'm having a lot of fun doing these actually. So, uh, that's it for this one until next time.